Crystal Palace 1, Chelsea 2. Chelsea absolutely steal a victory at the death. Conor Gallagher, big man, you have to celebrate that. First of all, you played there for nine months. You scored the first goal for your boyhood club. It's a screamer of a goal and you're not celebrating. Well, you know what? I'm going to celebrate for you. But this wasn't a great performance from Chelsea and there is a lot to take away. And you already know what we do here on Chatting Breeze. The good, the bad, and the downright ugly. Three segments, we talk about it, cover the game and you enjoy it. Let's get on with the video. But you already know the drill. The way this channel works is by your interactions. In the comments below, tell me, would you have celebrated if you have scored that goal? Hit the like button, we're aiming for a thousand likes. Subscribe to the channel because I deliver great content. Just trust me on that one. And in the comment, pinned comment is my Instagram. Follow me on there. Let's talk about the lineup. The lineup was an interesting one. We went for some sort of hybrid of a 4-2-2 or a 4-2-3-1. It was very confusing. Sterling started on the right hand side. Fofana was next to Thiago Silva. Chile played. Did not have a great game. We are going to talk about him. Rhys James locked Zaha down the whole game. And overall, it was actually a very imaginative lineup, right? It was something that we didn't expect, Potter really surprised us, and it showed by the performance. Players lacked cohesion, they really lacked the element of fluidity, and it was very evident. But we are going to start with the downright ugly first, because there are some things I've got to get out of my chest. Actually, you know what, let's be positive, let's start with the good first. The good! Chelsea absolutely nicked that one. That goal from Conor Gallagher was fantastic. Listen, I don't give Christian Pulisic credit ever. Today I'm going to give him credit. Pulisic picked up the ball and done something that we haven't seen players do at Chelsea for a while. Run at someone. Pulisic picks it up, starts bobbing and weaving, bobbing and weaving, running at the defender and causing their defence to absolutely collapse. Three players come towards him, he dribbles in and out on the cones, gives it to Gallagher, gets very lucky with his first touch and that curler, I'm going to call it what it is, a goal, a beautiful goal into the top right hand corner and Chelsea win 2-1. The celebration or the lack of it. Yeah, Connor, Gallagher, bro, I've been calling you a roadrunner for days, right? How about time you start celebrating? Like, you deserve that moment. You don't know when you're gonna have that moment next time. Your first ever goal for Chelsea, you should be celebrating. But it's you and it's me, we're different. I would have celebrated the shit out of that goal. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Listen, if your career goes as planned, you're never playing for Palace again. So, Back yourself, big man. Then we need to talk about Silva's and Fafana's performance. A lot of people can say, Alex, they were poor. Well, Silva should have been sent off and Fafana gave the ball away twice in 10 minutes and we conceded from it. They started poor, but they were very good in the first, like a second half of the first half and the complete second half. They were actually really dominant. They Look, Chelsea play a ridiculously high line, right? And the reason they play the high line is because they want to compress that midfield. And they want to make sure that everyone's close and they're, they're battling in the middle. And that if there are any loose balls, we're close and tight. Yet, it leaves space in behind and Palace are quick on the break. Look, we were really reckless in the first 10 minutes. And you could see by Fafana giving the ball away, we got punished. But he really grew onto the game. Great last ditch tackles. Great like interceptions of low Excellent cross. Thiago Silva as well, got the assist. The assist doesn't matter, because for me, right, when you look at a defender's performance, it's the last thing you need to look at is the attacking output. It always has to come down to, did he do his job fundamentally? He was our best defender today. Reese James as well, by the way, because I don't think enough credit's gonna go to Reese. I've already seen a few people, Reese had a poor game, he didn't really attack well. Reese shut Wilfred Zaha down to the point where Zaha packed up his bag, went to the right hand side, and started bullying Ben Chil. Zaha could not get a sniff for 70 minutes. I forgot Wilfred Zaha was playing. This is Wilfred Zaha FC. Everything goes through, every single attack goes through Wilfred Zaha. Not today, Giza. Not today. Reese James put the handcuffs on him, the shackles on him. Literally, he said, wherever you go, I go. Whatever you want to do, I'm going to do. You are not going to go to the toilet without me following you in there. You are not going to have a moment to yourself. You can't go and have a shit without me being there to prevent you from having one. And Reese James shut him down and I love it. Well done Reese. fantastic performance. This is what I want to see from Reese James. It is beautiful that you can attack. It is beautiful that you got a wonderful cross, but it is fundamentally essential that you can defend. My right back can defend. My right back is the best right back in the world. Well done, Rich James. And finally, Abamyang. Abamyang's all-round performance today was nah. 
He's not a good footballer. Uh, he's never been a good footballer. You're not going to ask him to become a great footballer at the age of 33. At this top level, Wilfred Zaha, uh, Aubameyang will not be a great footballer. But he's a fantastic finisher. And that goal today, no one else in our team scores. Not one other player in our team scores that goal. Because when the Thiago heads it to him, my man lets it run and slaps it. Absolutely slapped it. Instinctive Vin uh, Vinicius finish. Literally, oh, vulgar a shot. That shot was phenomenal. He lashed at it with so much venom, caught the keeper as surprised, had the wherewithal to know where the goal was. Number nine, you can see this guy's going to score goals if we just allow him to generate, like, have those half chances. We just have to be productive and clinical. The three points today were integral and we need to be proud of. But now we need to talk about the bad and the ugly. We're gonna start with the ugly because I'm fuming with the ugly. Guys, the ugly. And the ugly today was Mason Mount's performance. Mason Duracell Bunny Mount. Mason Red Bull Can Mount. This guy, literally used to be, I used to call him Duracell Bunny, because he used to be all over the place. Now he doesn't even do that. Now he doesn't even play with energy. Today he was shocking. I don't know where you want to start. Do you want to start with his inability to play the eight role, his inability to play the 10 role, his inability to create for anyone else other than unless he's going to have an opportunity. This guy was poor today. And the fact that he lasted 80 minutes makes me sick. It absolutely makes me sick. And the reason it makes me sick is because there are other alternatives on the pitch and on the bench that would do so much better than him in those positions. Ruben Loftus-Cheek could do better than him in the eight. Conor Gallagher evidently could do better than him in the eight. There are other players. Zachary, I might as well give him a chance. Why is Mount playing in the 8 and then moving to the 10? Kai should be playing in that 10. We saw for Germany what happens when you play Kai Havertz in the 10. Good things happen. People start eating. He is a chef in the 10. He causes problems. He absolutely is the main vocal point of that team. With us, he's not. With us, we need to defend with Mason Mount. And guess what? It causes problems. The indirect free kick, People are making excuses. Oh, he's aiming for the bottom. You've got the whole goal. Go high. If you don't go high, go low and down the middle. Drill it at their knees so it flicks and goes in. You have to do that. No, he tries to be too direct. He hit the bottom corner of the side netting. Absolute idiot. You know what? That player really frustrates me. He is only playing because he graduated from Cobham. And that's why he hasn't been dropped. If he was not an English graduate for Cobham, he would be dropped by now. Literally, he's playing on reputation alone. Then you talk about Ben Chilwell. I understand Ben Chilwell got injured. And I understand the injuries coming back from has been horrific. But Ben Chilwell today was shocking. I understand people love Ben Chilwell for what? His goal scoring attributes. But Ben Chilwell defensively, Poor. Zaha switched and absolutely for 20 minutes cooked his ass. He absolutely cooked him. He was absolutely taking the mickey. He was licking his lips and saying, I am going to run at you at will and you can't do nothing. And then it got to the point where he was running in behind him. Ben didn't realize where he was. He was consistently making diagonals. It got to a point where Thiago Silva had to come out and take Zaha one on one because Ben was too late to cover around. It literally was embarrassing. Am I saying Ben Chil was a bad player? But people saying he's on the same level as Cucurella, you lot are criminals. You need to sort yourselves out because those type of things, you could get prosecuted for that. Absolutely, you could get prosecuted for that. Those two players are not on the same level. Cucurella is on another level and I can't wait till he's fit because he needs to play going forward. Ben Chilwell is great cover, but he ain't a starter. I'm sorry. The bad, the bad today, bruh, it looks lackluster. It looks like Potter just took over. Like, it literally looked like it. No new manager bound. A lot of people said, you know what, there's a lot of cohesion that we need to build. We need to build some emphasis of our attacks. People love to use words like that, you know? A new dimension. Listen, there's no dimension, it's dimension. I don't care about that stuff. The only thing that I saw that was different today was we would pick up the ball and die at it for an in-swinging run. And the only thing, the outward run. Uh, what's called Raheem done it a few times, Jorginho tried that pass, or a few times Kai tried it. Other than that, same shit, different day. 
slow on the ball, lacklustre, invisible players. Raheem Sterling today, big man. Invisible. Kai Havertz today. Other than two, three quick moments, the same as Raheem, both invisible. Invisible men. As much as I like both of those players, as much as I think both of those players are definitely good, today they were poor. And this is what you get on this channel, the truth. I don't hold my tongue, I don't bite my tongue, I say it how it is, I've always said it. This was absolutely shocking from our forwards today. Aubameyang wasn't involved, but we don't expect him to be involved. Mason Mount, bro, I don't even know what he was doing. The forward line was very poor, no cohesive units, no patterns of play. You would think we're at Hackney Marshes, or you would think you're at my local Sunday League team, and these players are literally playing for themselves because it's the weekend and they're going to have some fun. So they want to dribble a couple man on, they want to move the ball safely, but nothing, no patterns of play. Potter needs to work on that, we need to drill them, we need to be better because Milano on midweek is going to be a problem. And finally that midfield needs to improve, it needs to improve. It is criminal that you have Jorginho, Kovacic and Mount in a midfield three and it can't work. Sorry, mate, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Kovacic or Kante with Jorginho be one of the best midfields in the We were absolutely dominating teams. We were suffocating them, the triangles, the patterns, everything was on point. You can't tell me Potter can't get an average performance out of these three. Kova, I understand he's been injured and he's recovering. And this is what happens when you play players when they're injured. This is the types of performances that drop. Jorginho, I don't know what the problem is with him, you know? Some days he's fantastic, some days he's so mid and it's like you have to get him out. Mount, we've already spoken about. Guys, this was the Gaff Guys video. I hope you lot enjoyed the video. I hope you lot liked the video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We won. I know I'm angry. I know I'm very frustrated today. But the performance was very poor. And I, I don't like the result to dictate my opinion of the game. I want the performance to dictate my opinion. Because if we played well, I would have come out and said, you know what? We dropped points, but we played well today. We did this, we did that. Today, I saw none of that. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Peace out, I'm out. Bye.